All right, what's good, folks? You already know what it is. It's your man, Jay Ross. I am back with another dope segment of Weekly Views as usual. Now, today, we're going to be talking about arguably one of the greatest crime shows, drug shows, wherever you want to call it, to hit television. HBO's The Wire. And these right here are my rankings in order from, from, from one to five, in no particular order. So don't come for me in the comments. I'm going to rank them. Starting off with one of my favorite seasons, it has to be season one, just because that was the introduction to it all. I mean, rest in peace. You got uh, D'Angelo Barksdale was one of my favorite characters on there. We have a young Michael B. Jordan on there. Wood Harris. We see the introductions in him on The Wire. We got my man Stringer Bell. I was kind of mad. I was mad at y'all HBO for, for killing him. Y'all ain't have to do that. Omar the terrorist, Omar Little is on there. That's what, and then we leading into number three. The reason I'm putting number three behind number season one because one of is one of my favorite seasons. We get the introduction to the man we know as Marlo Stanfield, just terrorizing stuff. And the war happened, which we already know who won that war. I ain't ain't no secret who won that war. I'm going with season four after that. There was no, there was no more Barksdale out on the street. Stringer Bell is gone, and Marlo was out there just creating a mess. I mean, there was killings on the wire, but this man took, took murdering people to another level, putting people in the vacants, just like crazy. And it don't get no better than that. Not only that, we we, we see the young group of kids on there with Michael and and, and Naaman and and that whole crew and how they emerge. And then not only that, this is where Croup. Chris and, and Snoop really shine. They shine. You know what I'm saying? And can't forget my man Slim Charles, too. He was another standout character in this season. Now, I'm going to have to go with season five because it was the last season of The Wire. It was, you know what I'm saying? Um, rest in peace. Omar gets killed. Um, it was a lot of just, you know, McNulty is going crazy. And, you know, his 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 unit is tired of him. And he was doing that stuff with the, the ribbons, putting them around their arms and stuff like that, trying to pin the bodies on Marlo. But obviously it didn't work. And I'm putting season two last because, well, I felt like that season was just too slow. I know a lot of people liked it because the Greeks, but it just wasn't enough. I don't know. I just wasn't really feeling that season. It's not one of my, my favorite seasons to watch of the, of the Wire. Now, when we talk about characters on The Wire... We cannot forget about Omar. Omar is one of my favorite characters because he was the boogeyman. When people seen him coming, they know what time it is. Omar's coming. Omar's coming. I like to call him the big bad boogeyman. You know what I'm saying? When he comes, everybody goes into hiding. One of the things that I did respect about Omar, he had a code. He didn't just put, you know, he just wasn't going around and just trying to get at anybody. You know, like he said, when have you known him to not put his, you know, put a gun on anybody that wasn't in the game? But, you know, Omar was just one of those characters that you had to respect. Because even though he was a terrorist, he still had a heart. He still had a heart. And it took everything in their power to try to catch this, this man. Even you see on season five, man, this man getting shot out and he pulls a Spider-Man and jumps down from a, I think it was like a four four story apartment building, broke his leg. That was crazy, man. But this is one of the most important. I feel like this is the most important character on the wire by far. If y'all argue, it's okay. Go ahead and put it in the comments. But I feel like Omar is the top of the line. Is one of the most important characters on the wire. Now, when we talk about this show, I love Barksdale's crew. But I think when Marlo, when Marlo and his crew really started running things in Baltimore, on, on especially for season four, it took the show up to a, another notch. And it wasn't just Marlo; he had his he had his people under him, Chris and Snoop. Now, Chris was one of those type of characters, man. He didn't really argue with Marlo; he just put in work. You know what I'm saying? He he didn't really do a whole lot of talking. He just did what he had to do and get the job done. Now, Snoop, on another hand, she was different. Hood female, Baltimore accent, and was just a soldier. I feel like this crew right here, this I put it, is one of the best crews out of the out of the whole out of the whole TV series. Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think. But they didn't take nothing from nobody. 
at all. Only thing I got to pick, a bone to pick with Marlo is Marlo. Y'all didn't have to kill little Kevin, man. Why y'all kill little Kevin? <laughs> y'all could Why? Why y'all y'all kill him, man? Uh, they were just putting people in the vacants, and it took them forever to find them. And, and I don't know how many bodies, Mozzie, how many bodies you have in the vacants? He had a whole, he got, he, he had a whole lot, man. But yeah, man, shout out to Marlo. Shout out to Marlo. Now, we are taking it to season three. Arguably one of the best seasons in The Wire. This is where we see the introduction of, of, of Marlo Stanfield and his crew and the war. It was just an outright war. Avon is just coming home. He's trying to come back and claim his territory. And here you got this new kid, Marlo Stanfield, on the block, taking up things and, and really, and you see the, the war just just all out of full bloodshed like nothing before. Marlo is dropping bodies. Well, the kids called him today. He had some steppers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got They got steppers, and they just stepping on anything and everything. Not only that, my man Stringer Bell gets killed. Everybody wanted to assume that Marlo had something to do it, but it wasn't him. You know what I'm saying? We couldn't save him. He did some grimy stuff, trying to play both sides, and you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have tried to crush Brother Mazone. But when you talk about any of these seasons, we gotta talk about season three because this is one of the best, the wars out there. I love going back and watching clips of this war and just seeing it from from start to finish and how everything is again, everything happened and unfolded. 